Okay, let's solve this classic algebra word problem. And uh, let me just go ahead and read it to you. It says, find three consecutive integers whose sum is 33. Now, I said this is kind of a classic or typical type of word problem that you would see in algebra. Not this specific problem, but this type of problem. So if you're studying algebra or something, you know, an algebra type of course, maybe it's college algebra, introductory algebra, there's a lot of different courses that go by different names, but effectively you're learning uh, fundamental introductory level algebra. So you're going to be able to uh, have to handle problems like this. And, uh, you know, word problems typically make people look like this. Students are like, word problems? No, not word problems. Well, you know, I know you love word problems. You out there are like, no, no, give me word problems. Give me, oh, I wish all my homework problems were word problems. Well, why do people shy away from word problems? Well, word problems are nothing more than kind of the application of the math skills and concepts that you're learning. Okay, so if you're struggling learning, you know, math or understanding math, then, you know, you're not going to obviously be able to apply those skills in a confident manner. And word problems take practice. So give yourself a break in terms of, you know, uh, if you're not figuring them out right off the bat, you know, you're going to have to work harder. You're going to have to, you know, think about it. And uh, there's no better way to get better at word problems than to actually do word problems. <laughs> it's just practice. It's one of these things you can't, like, say, hey, give me the secret formula to do word problems. One, two, three. Oh, and I'll just do this every single time, and I'll get this right. Not that way, okay? But... If you stick with me for a few minutes, we're going to go through and tackle this particular word problem. I'm going to give you some general guidance that you definitely want to know as a uh, math student in terms of word problems. So we don't want to see any of these kind of expressions. We want to change this to, that was awesome, I learned something, and that's the goal of this video. So we're going to tackle this particular word problem in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description uh, of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses, uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, shortly. Um, college algebra, I have a ton of those type of courses, but I also have many specialty courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, Alex, CLEP exam, AccuPlacer, um, maybe you're taking a teacher certification exam, maybe you're studying uh, to get into a nursing uh, school, all those type of situations and exams have a lot of mathematics on it. So you might be studying math outside of a math course because you need to know math to pass these exams. So I can definitely help you out. Just go to my site and check out my full course catalog. If uh, I don't have what you're looking for, drop me a line and I'll help you the best I can. I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, can definitely help you out. I have a great homeschool learning system. And then obviously I help those of you that are just struggling in your math class. You're like, I don't like math, um, you know, struggling here. Well, listen, I'm glad that you found me because my program can definitely help you out. And, and this video is going to help you out. But one thing that you need to be doing to help yourself out is take great math notes, okay? So over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take great math notes almost always end up looking like this person over here, and the reverse is true. Those uh, students who are like, nah, I, I don't need to take math notes. That's just too much work for me. I like looking at my uh, cell phone, talking to my friends. Listen, I was a student, uh, you know, way back in the good old days, I made all those mistakes, but I paid a price and you're going to pay a price as well. You got to focus and take great math notes. The better your notes are, the better everything is going to go. Okay. So you're watching this video to learn about word problems, but let's just make sure you're doing, uh, the fundamentals to be successful in mathematics. If you're not doing this stuff, then you're not going to have the skills to, uh, you know, actually solve word problems. Okay, but as you're improving in your math notes, if that's your situation, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so here we go. Uh, find three consecutive integers whose sum is 33. So three consecutive, now we need to know something here, right? We need to know what this word means and what this word means right here. So we're gonna talk about this in one second, but let me quickly 
give you some general uh, guidelines in terms of word problems, all right? And by the way, if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll uh, consider one, liking this video at the end if it helps you out, two, subscribing because I have a ton of other word problem videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. So, you know, you won't want to uh, check those videos out after this if you're practicing word problems because it's you're kind of practicing this general guideline and, and that is this. Here, let me write that a little bit better. Word problems. Let's just put. Let's just put kind of like a. Um, uh, well, let's put word problems. Why not? Word problems. How do we want to uh, approach them? Well, first of all, you need to read the problem. Now, this particular problem, pretty easy to read because it's like one sentence, but you have to read the problem multiple times. I would say probably at least five times. You have to read, reread, pull information out. Think about what the problem is saying. So you just can't read a word problem once and then uh, solve it. So that's the first thing. So expect to read the problem multiple times. That's normal. All right. The second thing is try to create some sort of model. Okay. Some sort of model, some sort of oftentimes a graphical model helps. All right. Something so you can kind of see the problem in a different type of uh uh, manner. Okay, so you want to pull the information out of the problem and kind of like model it the best you can. There's all kinds of different ways you can do that. You can create little uh, sketches, you know, uh, little figures. You can create tables. There's a lot of different techniques. It all depends on the word problem, but you want to have some sort of model of what's going on. Okay, and you can kind of be a little creative here. Um, but again, as I was saying, in algebra, there's typical, there's classic type of word problems that you encounter, right? Or just very quickly, you'll have like motion problems and, you know, like, you know, two trains left at the same time, one's going fast than another, that type of thing. The motion problems are, are a classic type of problem. Then the problem that we're doing right now involving numbers is another type of classical uh, type of problem. There's mixture problems. There's all type of age problems. Another one just came to mind. So there's kind of a group of these typical type of problems. If you if you get to know the good strategies to solve each of these type, then most you're going to be covered pretty well for most uh, algebra courses. All right, so the next thing you need to do with the word problem is to um, assign variables, okay? Variable or variables, all depending on the problem. But we need to say, okay, we're going to let x equal to whatever. And that's going to be oftentimes the unknown, the thing that you're kind of trying to solve for in the word problem. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to do something with these variables. We are talking about algebra, so typically what that means is you're going to construct or um, you're going to build, let's just say, build an equation. Okay, So we want to have an equation that involves this variable. All right, so we're going to take the information, we're going to find relationships such that we can try to equate things. More often than not, sometimes it's an inequality, but more often than not, it's an equation that involves this variable. Then we're going to solve the equation okay, that we built. And then lastly, you're going to answer the question. Okay, Now, don't be fooled. Sometimes when you solve this equation, oftentimes students think, they're, you know, they think that they're, they're done. Okay? Not always the case, all right? So sometimes it's the case, but not always. So make sure that when you solve that you really think about, hey, did I actually answer the question? So you have to go back and reread. And sometimes there's a few other steps after you solve the equation to fully answer the question in the word problem. Okay, so this is the kind of general guideline that will help you for all word problems. Again, uh, in algebra, there's kind of these classic type of word problems. And the one that we're handling here is uh, one of them. Okay, now, whoops. Uh, well, let's go down here. All right, so the first thing we need to do in this particular problem when we read it is we need to um, define this word consecutive. So what does that mean, consecutive? Well, it means uh, one right after the other. So, for example, uh, let's just talk about three consecutive numbers. So that would be like, say, two. Then the next number would be three, and the next number would be four. So these are three consecutive numbers. That's what that word means. So if you're doing a word problem, you don't know what a particular description or word means, go in, you know, I was going to say get a dictionary. You can see I'm aging myself. The good old-fashioned days where you actually went in, there was a book for somebody out there may not know this, might be too young. There was a book called a dictionary. You actually had to open it up, 
just like the phone book. <laughs> we didn't have Google and everything else. You actually had to go open a book and look this word up. But um, anyways, if you don't know what a word means, look it up and make sure you understand the definition. But that's what consecutive means. Now, let's uh, make sure we understand this word integers. Okay, so what are integers? Well, integers, let me just show you on a number line real quick. So integers here, uh, this would be zero. Uh, we're, we're talking about whole numbers, okay? Starting from zero, zero is actually an integer. So one, the next whole number is two, the next whole number is three. These numbers here are integers and also going in this direction, negative one, negative two. There's a whole, you need to understand, again, what uh, uh, specifically what this word means, okay? So we're talking about the positive and negative whole numbers to include zero. So these type of numbers, we're not, talk, we're not talking about two and one third, that's a fraction, that's a different type of number. So integers are specifically these type of numbers. So now that you know what the word consecutive and integers means, now we can kind of like, um, you know, model this, kind of think about this, all right? So let's just read the problem again. Find three consecutive integers, okay, whose sum is 33. So we're talking about uh, uh, so we're going to have like the first number, right? And then right after that, we'll have that second integer, and then we'll have that third integer. So it's going to be uh, one right after another, right after another, okay? And so we have to find three integers, okay? They are obviously in a consecutive um, sequence here that once we add up this guy with this guy and this guy, the sum is 33, Right, so that's this is kind of one way you can kind of model this. You can come up with other ways. So we're like, hmm, okay, so we need to find three consecutive integers. Well, at this point, we need to start thinking about some variables. So let's let x, all right, equal to the first integer. So whatever our first number is, let's just say that's going to be x. So our next number will be what? Well, if they're consecutive, Let's go back to this example, 2, 3, and 4. These numbers are, are separated by 1. Okay, if I add 1 uh, to 2, I mean, that's a better way to, to describe consecutive, I get to 3. Okay, so uh, if, what, if this is my first number, if I, have, if I add 1 to it, I'm going to get to that second. Here, let's put it right here, x plus 1. I'm going to get to that second integer. Okay, and then if I add 1 onto this guy, if I take my x plus 1, which is my second integer, and I add 1 onto it, I'll get to my third integer. So x plus 1 plus 1, let me scroll down here, was uh, obviously x plus 1 plus 1 is x plus 2. So we'll let x plus 2 be that third integer. So really, our three consecutive integers are going to be x, x plus 1, and x plus 2. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about, assigning variables and really kind of thinking this through. Now, as a teacher who's graded, I don't even know, I was going to say thousands, ten thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, literally, you know, we're talking about decades of, you know, seeing homework, quizzes, tests, you know, uh, what do teachers look for? Well, they want, to, they want to see evidence of understanding. So even if you get this problem, even if you went this far, okay, and I was grading your, let's say this was a test question, and you went this far, I would give you probably at least five out of 10 points if this particular uh, problem was worth 10 points for partial credit because you're showing me a lot of good stuff. But now we have to continue on. Now, what was that next thing I talked about? Once we assign variables, we got everything else, now we have to build an equation. So we have to go back to the problem again and use the additional information. So we have three consecutive integers. We, we modeled out pretty good on the x, x, whoops, uh, let me put this a little better x plus 1 and x plus 2, whose sum is 33. Okay, so now this is the, the key ingredient to build uh, an equation, whose sum. In other words, if I add these guys up, it's going to be equal, that sum is, in algebra, this word is, always is going to be the equal uh, sign. Okay, so obviously we have to know what the word sum is, means that we add all three of these guys up, we're going to get to 33. So... Let's go ahead and actually construct an equation now. You can see I did the work here. So here is our first integer. Here is our second integer. And here is our third integer. And I'm adding them up. So 
first plus the second plus the third. Okay, my here is my integers, my three consecutive integers, whose sum is 33, whose sum is equal to 33. So at this point in the problem, again, this is going to be an application of your algebra skills, which I know you've been taking great math notes. You're not being distracted by your best buddy next to you. You're not doing your homework for another class, and you're not checking your social media. I know you're not doing that. <laughs> Anyways, if, if it was me back in the good old days, believe me, uh, we didn't have cell phones. Well, we had those huge ones back in those days, but... Um, uh, we would have been making the same mistake. So it's so easy to get distracted. So if you're not paying attention, you're not learning how to you know, build your math skills, and you're not going to be able to do this problem. So this is not a word problem in this case. This is just, hey, can you solve an equation, All right? So hopefully, you know, you can solve this. Now, if you can't solve this, then you need to go back and work on your equation-solving skills, right? So this is why, you know, showing all your work will give your teacher some guidance on, you know, um, where to direct you. If you're not getting these problems right, they'll be like, hey, listen, you did it, all this other stuff good, but you are weak over here, all right? So that's why you want to show all your work. All right, so let's go through and solve this. We have x, x plus 1, uh, x plus 2. Let me erase this here so we can focus in. So what are we going to do? Well, there's no distributive property situation, so we're going to combine like terms, x, x, and x gives us 3x, and then I have 1 and 2, which is 3. So we have the equation 3x plus 3 is equal to 33. So what do we do? Well, I need to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, and I get 3x is equal to 30. Okay. So to solve for x, I divide now both sides of the equation by 3, and you get x is equal to 30 divided by 3, which is 10. So remember what I said, just because you solve the equation, don't be happy, but like, here, teacher, you know, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. No, well, we're not done yet, okay? We still need to answer the question, what are those three consecutive integers? So remember, x uh, equals whatever that case was, that was the first integer. So x equals to uh, 10, that was our first integer. Okay, x plus 1 is our second, so we take that 10, add 1 to it, that's 11. And then x plus 2, so our 10 plus 2 is our third, so that's 12. And let's just check that real quick. 10 plus 11 plus 12, is that 33? In fact, it is 33. All right, so if you actually were able to do this problem on your own successfully, okay, and maybe you pause the video, probably should encourage you to do in the beginning of this video, if you got this totally right, then I would just be like, wow, give yourself uh, a happy face, a mohawk, an A plus, a thousand percent, throw in a few stars. Matter of fact, if I was your math teacher, I'd be like, you know, just take the math book, go home, don't even come back. You're awesome. You're, you're you know, you're, you're probably watching that guy on YouTube teaching you all this stuff. Listen, that's excellent, right? Of course, there's other type of word problems, and this is, in a grand scheme of things, a fairly easy problem. So, but, you know, to get better word problems, you got to start with the easy stuff and kind of keep working your way up, right? There's just no substitute for practice. And when you run into a difficult problem, you know, don't don't give up. That's the worst thing you do is, you know, try to figure it out and ask questions. Okay, go to your teacher, or, you know, or, or, you know, come to my YouTube channel or whatever the case is. You know, just don't quit. That's the main uh, idea in terms of learning mathematics. All right, so if this video was helpful in some uh, particular manner, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my uh, channel organized from uh, basic to advanced mathematics and my playlist uh, are all there for you. And I'm posting new material all the time. I probably have well over a thousand videos. Um, at least. But uh, my best resources will be found in my Math Help program, so you know where to find those links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.